Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today I'm going to be talking about my favorite roll and write games. Roll and write type games and games of that style have just been blossoming lately. It's a genre that is absolutely on fire right now. So I wanted to go ahead and talk about them, the ones I like the best, the ones I've played anyway. There are a few I have not played that I suspect could easily end up in my top 10, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the ones I like the most. Now, all of the ones I'm talking about here are not strictly roll and write games. Some of these are driven by cards instead of a roll of the dice, but I figured they were close enough where I felt comfortable putting them on the list. Surprisingly, in the, in the grand scope of things, there's not that many roll and write games. Uh, I don't think I could have made a top 20, for example, and still feel comfortable about the last few being on any sort of top anything lists. But, thankfully, like I said, the genre is very much at its peak right now, and there's always, always new ones coming out. There's a few uh, coming out that I'm excited to check out. And we just had a roll and write game get nominated for a major award in Germany, so that's exciting as well to see uh, the little genre that could sort of taking off in a major way. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into these, my top 10 roll and write games. My number 10 spot goes to a game called 21. Now, this is probably one of the lightest ones on the list here. Though roll and write games tend to be fairly light for the most part, but 21 is really, really simple. This is one you could teach to just about anybody. You are simply uh, rolling those dice and attempting to put them in spots on your small board, and you are, have a pre-printed die face in different colors on that board. You want to try to get put the largest number you can up to the maximum printed on there. But you can put a lower number in there if you if you so choose, or if you have to. Sometimes you have to. Uh, it does, again, uh, something that a lot of older roll and write games such as Yahtzee did not do, which is allow for a single roll to matter to multiple people, and many of these games do that. That's sort of a, a one way in which these uh, types of games have been modernized. But I like 21. It's quick, it's very light and simple, and as I said, while it's not the most exciting one for me, it is one that I can show to just about anyone. And even if whether they've played Yahtzee or not, this is one they could probably get into very quickly. So that's my number 10, 21. My number 9 is Dice Stars. Now this one has a roll and write meets dice drafting kind of mechanism to it in which you are populating a pool of dice and then drafting from those and taking those results and putting them on your board. When you roll dice, you can choose one, two, or three dice to add to the dice pool. You'll roll them into it, and then if there were some dice left over in the pool from the previous player, those can be taken as well. You are going to take all of the stars, or all of one color, or all of one face, and then add them to your board. You are trying to uh, then fill up your board while also possibly taking enough stars to double a specific scoring opportunity. The game also has a little bit of a push your luck. It makes me think, just a little, of games like Lost Cities, in which once you start an expedition, well, you better, you better make it or you're going to lose uh, victory points. Uh, so it's an all or nothing thing, right? You, you double down. If you make all the stars you need, then you get that score doubled. If you start but don't finish, well, you just shouldn't have started because you're getting zero points. Uh, this is an interesting one. It's uh, It does feel largely different from a lot of the other roll and write games because of that sort of drafting mechanism, but it's still not the most whiz-bang exciting one I've played. So it gets in there at number nine for me, Dice Stars. Number eight for me is Nakmal. This is one of the ones that I call the land grab roll and write, and by that I mean you are marking things off in order to claim them, in order to sort of grow your, you know, land grab. You're taking up space on your own particular board. You're competing to do so with other players, though, because if you claim, for example, an entire column first, 
you're going to get some bonus points out of that that the other players will not. So you are trying to do that as well. And you are simply expanding, trying to get the right color and number combinations so that you can fill in areas on your board. The reason it comes in at number eight for me is because I find it just a tad long for the involvement that it gives you. I do wish it was a little bit shorter, but it's a straightforward game. It's easy to play. It's uh, one that I, I, you know, next to 21, I would say, is one of the simpler ones out there. Uh, but it's a little long, just to, for, for what it is, that is. It's not really a long game, but for what it is, it's a little bit long. But I enjoy it. It's one I've hung on, uh, I'm hanging on to. I've, uh, I like it. Uh, I've taught it to a few different people who all seem to like it. And they even made available uh, some extra pads with different colors, which simply give you a rearrangement of the colored squares on the board. Definitely not a necessity, but they're nice to have around. So my number eight, Nakmal. My number seven goes to Quicks, one of the first games I played in this roll and write craze, really, uh, you know, not counting Yahtzee and what have you. But Quicks is another one in sort of the push along a track that you cannot go back on, a little bit like Dice Stars in that way, though that game has mechanisms that are not in here. In this one, you're rolling dice, you can then combine, uh, you have your two white dice, you can take a number and put it on a track. There's two tracks in two colors going 2 through 12, two other tracks going 12 through 2. Once you mark something off, let's say you mark off the uh, 4 in one of the two tracks that goes up, well, you can no longer take the 2 or the 3 in that track. And you're going to be scoring victory points for how many times you check off a number per track. Very simple. The other players on your turn also get to mark one thing off. So uh, there is a little bit of interaction there. You don't just watch the other players rolling while it's not your turn. And as I said, many of these games will attempt to do that to keep the players engaged. But Quix is a good one, a very simple one, a great introductory roll and write game. Much like 21, this one I like better, hence it's higher, because it's got a little bit more bite to it. I just find it a little bit more engaging. So my number seven, Quix. My number six is Rolling America, based on an earlier design called Rolling Japan. This one has a different map, and again, it's sort of the land grab style, in which you are writing in numbers in order to claim locations and squares on your board, trying to expand, take up as much as you can without being forced to cross out sections that you cannot score. The trick is very simple. Once you write in a number, let's say I put four in a space, anything next to that has to be... Uh, the same or one lower or one higher so you have to be careful with how you manipulate your board where you leave yourself spots open to expand and so on there's a couple of other rules there but that's basically it I picked rolling America over rolling Japan specifically because they give you a couple of new options on your turn that allow for a bit more dice mitigation and uh, I also rate this one a little bit higher than Nakmal because it is while well, a somewhat similar style of play. It's just a hair more thematic, but also a little shorter and more engaging throughout the entire play. So Rolling America is really good stuff, very fun, and it's one that attempts, at least, to give you a little bit of theme while you are playing, as opposed to many roll and write games that just dismiss with that uh, pretense altogether, which is not a problem, but if you like a little bit of theme in your games, uh, or a little more, let's say, then Rolling America might be a good pick for you. That's my number six, Rolling America. I spoke in the intro about one of these games being nominated for a major German award. This is my number five Kennerspiel nominee, Ganshan Clever. And this is one in which you are, again, usually sort of pushing along tracks with your dice rolling, but there's a lot more going on in this one. You've got all the colors represented on your board, and you are... Moving some tracks along, some of them are actually grids in which you're going to write numbers instead of simply check off a space. And you are going to then have those things affect one another. So if I mark off a space in purple, that might let me write in a number in yellow, which then completes a column in yellow, allowing me to take some other special bonus and so on. Triggering those chains do lead to moments where you feel, you know, no pun intended, clever. And that's fun. Now, everyone's going to get them at some point or another, so it doesn't really matter if you do them early or do them late, but what you uh, do with the dice and, and which ones you draft, because there's an interesting mechanism there, is important. 
and does lead to a lot of fun. This is not one I would necessarily recommend to someone who's never played a roll and write game. You know, if I uh, want to teach someone how the uh, games usually work, I might try one of the simpler ones. But once they've got that, they're comfortable, they're ready for more, then Ganshan Clever is certainly a good pick for that. So my number five, the recent uh, Kennerspiel nominee Ganshan Clever. My number four is a game that does not use dice at all, but it is based on a game that did use dice. This is Quinto, the card game. Now, Quinto was a very good roll and write game, and Quinto, the card game, uses the same player sheets. You are doing largely the same things, but it replaces the dice rolling with some card manipulation, and the, the system in place there is really quite uh, interesting and, and engaging. You are going to be much in like Quicks, writing in numbers on specific uh, lines, but then the columns are going to matter as well. You see, you cannot have the same number show up in the same same column. And these tracks are all slightly shifted uh, left and right, so that the numbers uh, you have to be mindful of. You might be ready to write in a 7 in green, but there's already a 7 right below that in red, let's say, so the 7 can't go there. Do you then skip a space and put the 7 on the next one? perhaps creating a gap that is going to be really hard to fill. Maybe you need a really specific number to fill it. Uh, there's all of these implications in play. The card play part allows you to play a card into a grid that's two by two cards, and then the numbers you create in those uh, lines and columns, those are the numbers you have triggered, also based on the colors of the cards. Really like it. A little more strategic than just the dice game. Also a little slower, of course. But in this game, I like that trade-off. So uh, I really enjoy this one. Definitely a strong roll and write type game. This is, again, Quinto the card game, and it's my number four. My number three is the one that deviates the most from the spirit of a roll and write game, I think. But it's such a fantastic design that I knew it was going to make my list. This is a game called Let's Make a Bus Route. And in it, you are going to be uh, riding in bus routes with your marker, picking up different characters, uh, dropping them off in other locations, connecting specific things, all while marking off in your own on your own board what's happening and then scoring different opportunities from those things. The differences here are that you are all sharing the same board in the center. Now, you've got your own board in which, again, you are marking off, oh, I picked up a student, oh, I have a worker here, and then I drop off that worker, score some victory points, that sort of thing. But the lines you are drawing are on the same city board, and so that gives you a few interesting uh, possibilities. You could, for example, uh, run across a line on which another player has already uh, driven, and that creates traffic. If you do that, that's bad for you. You want to avoid creating traffic. So that's a uh, part of what could happen. You are also need to be careful that you do not close yourself in. So you always must manage which way you go. And the way in which you do this is very simple. You flip over a card, that's a specific color. Your player board tells you how you must draw your route according to that color. For me, purple might be uh, two in a straight line. So from wherever my bus is sitting, I have to draw two in a straight line. The game also allows you to mitigate that by uh, breaking the rule, so to speak, marking off a space that's a, that's a penalty for you, and then not going two straight spaces. Maybe I could just go one straight uh, uh, you know, block and then take a, take a left. And so I'm allowed to sort of get out of a jam but I am going to take a penalty for doing so. Really an engaging, clever, ultra-quick game that in which the ratio of gameplay to game length is superb. I'm really, really impressed with this one. So, Let's Make a Bus Route is one of my favorite roll and ride games. Really a fantastic new discovery for me, and that's my number three. My number two is Kokoro Avenue of the Kadama, which was originally released as simply Avenue. Now, the Kokoro edition gives you a few things that were not to be found in the Avenue edition. You now have dry erase boards, and you now have a few new cards that you can use as a variant for the game. But in this one, you also have no dice, and you are going to be a lot like Let's Make a Bus Route, trying to connect things on the board. Also, by the way, that game has a dry erase board, so the similarities there are apparent. 
you are flipping over a card, that card tells you a specific type of route you must draw. Maybe it's straight up and down. Maybe it starts at the top and turns to one side or the other side. You then must draw that on your own board, attempting to connect specific things on that board, score the most victory points. Uh, it's a really engaging one. It's absolutely one of my favorites. I think it's one that takes what roll and write games can do and simplifies them and gives you something else to do in there. And it's also one of the first ones I played in which the roll and write was not, or the roll and write style part, was not about the numbers. You know, it was not about, oh, I write in a three, then I write in a four, then I'll skip the five and write in a six. That's great. In this one, it's all about uh, something much more tangible than that, less abstract than that. Literally making roads from one place to another. And I really, really like that. It's partly, I think, why I like Let's Make a Bus Route so much as well. So really enjoy it. If you've never played it, definitely would recommend you pick yourself up a, a copy of Kokoro. And that's my number two. And lastly, my number one is one that is probably A, one of the oldest ones on the list. B, shares a dry erase system with both my number two and my number three picks. And it is one that is probably the most thematic as well. This is St. Malo. And in St. Malo, you are rolling dice. You are then using those dice to draw in your castle space. You'll On that castle, you'll be able to draw in walls to protect you from raids. You'll be able to build buildings in there. You'll be able to hire specific characters. And you'll draw in a little circle for the character with a letter in the center to represent who that character is. And uh, each of those things is going to score in a specific way. The really clever part here is that you have a lot of freedom, but very quickly you'll start running out of space in which to do those things. So, where do you leave empty spaces for later? How much do you set something up till you cash it in, so to speak? All of those things are clever, interesting interactions. You also have to watch out, as I said, for the raids. You'll be attacked every now and then just by an in-game system. And if you are ready for it, you'll be penalized less than perhaps your opponents will. So... That's good. My only negative for this game is that it does not have as much, um, or rather it avoids uh, downtime, not as effectively as the other games do. You know, that's a strange way to say that sentence. The other ones have managed to involve everyone with every die roll. Uh, you know, some of the more modern roll and write games. Whereas St. Malo, you don't really get that. You do have a little bit of downtime. You do have to wait for the other players to do their rolling, write in whatever they're writing in, and then you'll get your go, which is why I prefer it with fewer players, actually. But other than that, a little bit of downtime, the gameplay experience is just superb. I love the artwork. I love the different things you can do in it. And it is really a very thematic game in many ways. You know, the characters are all named specific you know, they have jobs, they do something that makes sense thematically. You're collecting lumber, you're spending that lumber to build houses. You are constructing your walls, constructing different things for scoring. Lots going on in this one. Love it. Love St. Malo. Definitely my number one. So, that's it for my top 10 roll and write style games. Let me know in the comments below which ones I missed. Which ones are your favorites, you know? Uh, is there something that you like about roll and write games that some offer and, and, and some don't offer that really make the genre for you? What's, what's your favorite thing about this kind of game? All right, everybody. That's it for me. I'm Z Garcia. Thanks for checking this out with me. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.